Now, if I had to guess what the world's most popular functional mushroom is right now, I would definitely have to say it's lion's mane. You can look at the Google Trends data uh, over the last, what is this, 15 years or so, and you can see, you know, for the longest time, not much happening, not much happening, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's a huge explosion in interest of lion's mane mushroom, and it's never been more popular than it is today. People all over the world are using lion's mane as part of their daily routine. You can find it in capsules and powder and tinctures, but you can also find it in coffee, and you can find it in all sorts of other functional food products. And if you didn't know much about lion's mane, you might be wondering why. Like, why are people so excited about this mushroom? Well, first of all, lion's mane is a delicious gourmet edible mushroom, but that's probably not the reason why it's all of a sudden so popular. Because lion's mane is one of those rare unicorns that's both a gourmet edible, that's delicious, but it's also a powerful functional mushroom. It's known as the brain mushroom because of its reported cognitive benefits. It's a natural nootropic or brain booster, and funny enough, it even kind of almost looks like a brain. And not only does lion's mane have a long history of use for things like gut health and immune health, but there have been more and more studies coming out recently showing these brain boosting effects. So I like to keep my eyes peeled for new studies about lion's mane, and I was pretty excited to see this one. It was just published the 20th of January, so not that long ago, uh, in the Journal of Neurochemistry, and it was done by researchers in both Australia and Korea, and they were looking at new compounds found in lion's mane mushroom fruiting body that were shown to increase neurite outgrowth. Now, this is super cool because if you increase neurite outgrowth, basically the different connections between all the neurons in the brain, well, that's going to potentially massively improve brain function, which again is what this mushroom is used for. But to see it at this level where they found which compounds are actually doing that and how it works, well, that's super exciting. So this is exciting, obviously, for not only healthy functioning brains, but if you think about it, like neurons can be damaged through things like Alzheimer's or other issues. And that can obviously be super detrimental to everyday life. But if we could find bioactive compounds that could not only protect neurons, but also potentially regrow neurons, well, that could have a massive impact. Now, before diving into the study, I want to talk a little bit about nootrophic factors, because it is important to understand those if we want to understand how this whole thing works. In short, they are a family of proteins that support the growth, survival, and differentiation of neurons in the brain and the rest of the nervous system. So not only do they protect the brain's neurons from degradation, but can also help promote new ones to grow. Some examples of this are BDNF, which means brain-derived nootrophic factor, and NGF, which is nerve growth factor. We produce these in our brain, or using scientist parlance, you could say they are endogenous, meaning they are created inside of us. But if we weren't able to create them for some reason, or if we wanted more, we would need to find nootrophic factors from an outside source, otherwise known as an exogenous source. And scientists have tried to find different exogenous sources of nootrophic factors, but it's kind of difficult to do. One reason is because these things are just hard to synthesize or hard to create in a lab. But another reason is that even if we could ingest them or get them inside of us somehow, they degrade really quickly and will probably degrade before they're able to get to our brain and do any good. And finally, these exogenous nootrophic factors have difficulty getting to where they need to get to because of something called the blood-brain barrier. So typically they're very large molecules and they're not able to cross this blood-brain barrier which is something that protects our brain, so it's obviously a good thing, but it also can prevent certain things like exogenous nootrophic factors from being able to get into our brain. But that's what makes lion's mane so amazing and so special and so unique is because it contains compounds that are pure and safe natural compounds that actually can cross the blood-brain barrier and promote the synthesis of nerve growth factor. So again, here is the paper. This was done by the Journal of Neurochemistry, as I mentioned, and it starts with this super simple graphic, right? It shows lion's mane mushroom fruiting body and then the two compounds that they managed to isolate NDPIH and Heracene A. These are compounds unique to lion's mane and it shows how through this relatively complex mechanism uh, these compounds can increase neurite outgrowth so again increase the number of neurites and the connections in the brain. It can help to enlarge the growth cone, which is a part of the neuron that is super important, which we'll get into in a bit, and also enhance recognition memory in these mice that they tested it on. So basically they wanted to purify and extract some very specific compounds and see what those things do. Now, the thing to remember here when looking at any of this research 
is that lion's mane or any mushroom really can be prepared in all sorts of different ways and that can have a major different effect. So if you just ate this mushroom, for example, it would be a lot different than if you did an alcohol extract or if you did a hot water extract or if you just dried and powdered the mushroom. So, you know, it really, that part is pretty important, whether or not you're taking mushroom supplements or trying to use mushrooms for a specific use case, or if you're trying to understand how they did the research, understanding how they did the extractions is pretty important. So in this particular study, what they did was they started with the whole fruiting body of lion's mane mushroom. And let me show you this chart here. Uh, so Heresium arenaceus, so lion's mane, and then they, they did two extracts. They did an alcohol extract and then a few different fractions of that, and then a hot water extract. And then the cool thing is they tested all of those different extracts versus a control group to see how that would have an effect on hippocampal neurons in a Petri dish. And here are the results, they're really, really cool. So you can see, you know, this is the, the images of the neurons, and this is the control one here. And you can see these are all the different extracts. And what's cool is like basically every single one of the extract had a massive impact on the length of neur neurites. So the length of these, you know, outgrowths from the neuron, but also on the number of neurites. So the number of these little outgrowths. And again, you can see the visual here, how big of a difference that is. But just looking at these graphs here, you can see, you know, there's like a two to three X in the length of neurites and about the same in terms of the number of neurites. Now keep in mind here, this was done number one on the hippocampal neurons of rat brains, so not human brains, and it was also done on a Petri dish. So it can't be directly correlated to what is happening in humans, but still you can imagine if this is what these compounds are doing to neurons, well that might explain some of the things that people are experiencing when they use lion's mane mushroom. Because again, this is a mushroom with long history of use, like tons of people are finding lots of benefit from it, this just might be explaining how that actually works. Now this is getting a little more into the weeds, but they also extracted down to specific compounds. So now we're talking about not just alcohol extract and water extract, but actual compounds that were isolated from those extracts. So this is the NDPIH and the Heresine A, and the results here were even more surprising. So now if we look at the length of the neurite, they call it an axon here, but the length of the neurite on these cells, you can see that one of the extracts had basically a three and a half to four fold increase in length and they all had some really good results. Again, you can see the pictures here. This is the control group and these are the various compounds, NDPIH, Heresine A, and this other one and the effect that those have on the neurons. Now they also looked at another factor which is the size of the cone of the neuron. So what does this mean? Well, the cone is basically the area on the surface of a neuron where other neurons connect to and send signals. So as you can see here, you know, if you look at these different fractions or these different extracts of lion's mane uh, and the effect they had on the relative growth of the cone area, it's pretty stunning, right? Again, you have like five-fold increase to, we'll call it like a two and a half to five-fold increase in the cone size of these neurons. So to summarize, these compounds that are safe and naturally found in lion's mane mushroom, that are not found anywhere else, that are really hard to synthesize, they don't degrade quickly, and they can actually cross the blood-brain barrier and promote the growth of neurons. Now, this isn't to say that unextracted mushrooms or different extracts, say perhaps just a water extract or even just dried and powdered, powdered mushrooms aren't gonna have an effect because Again, human physiology is super complicated. Mushrooms are super complicated and how those interact makes something that's twice as complicated. And there have been studies done on just dried and powdered lion's mane mushroom, for example. There have been studies done on alcohol extracts of lion's mane mushroom. There've been studies done on the mycelium of lion's mane mushroom. So there's, again, a lot to, you know, to, to still learn here. But I think with more of these studies coming out, the more we're kind of unraveling or unlocking about the mystery of this obviously powerful mushroom. This video was a clip from The Mushroom Show, which is the one place you need to be to stay on top of all the amazing things happening in the world of mushrooms. Click here to watch the full episode that this clip was taken from and be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next release.